Hello, Keith Rocker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today got a little quick project. Hopefully it's gonna be a quick project that I need to knock out for the museum, Georgia Museum of Agriculture. In their uh, line shaft powered woodworking shop, they've got a pulley here. This is a loose pulley, uh, loose pulley, and that there's a pair of these, a tight loose uh, pair. One of them is attached tightly to a shaft. One of them is free spinning on the shaft and you move a flat belt from one to the other to engage uh, whatever it is you're engaging. This is the loose pulley. It has a bronze bearing up inside of it and uh, it has gotten dry and has worn out. Uh, there was a lot of slop in this bearing and it was causing some issues for them. Um, interesting thing is, is that I have actually put this bronze bearing in here and installed this bushing or this, this uh, pulley in the museum 20 years ago, it's been a while. Um, and what apparently had happened is, is that the person that was working in the in the in this area did not realize that there was a needed to be oil this, and it had, had run without oil for a while. And anyway, it wore the bearing out. There's bronze all up inside of this pulley uh, that has just kind of flaked off. We got a new uh, piece of bronze here we're gonna be using to turn a new bushing. We're gonna to have to turn that to fit, put it in there. First we need to do is press the old one out. Then we need to machine a new bushing that will be a press fit inside of this. So we'll probably make it about a, uh, I'll look it up, but probably I'm guessing about a half thousandths oversize. We'll press that inside. Then uh, we'll bore the inside to run on the shaft, which was, I'll have to look it up. I got, the, got it written down. It's an oddball size shaft, but that was not uncommon back in the day. All right, let's um, get in there and get this job knocked out. We're gonna go press this pulley out first, or press this bushing out first. I'm gonna try pressing this out over here on the arbor press. May have to go to the hydraulic press, just depending on how hard this goes. So I've actually got it sitting on a couple blocks, so it's not sitting on the rim, it's sitting on the hub. And I've got just something that's larger than the whole diameter, but smaller than the outside diameter here. So that should press all the way through. And we'll just feed that down and let's see if it, that bearing will push out. I'm gonna have to go to the hydraulic press. All right, I imagine once it starts moving, it'll go, but uh, this is gonna be a little stubborn. Let me get the hydraulic press set up. Right, we're over at the hydraulic press now. This is my 60 ton press that I restored a while back and uh, this ought to do it for sure. So let's bring it on down here. Put a little pressure on it. There it goes. Let's press it on out. There's the old uh, bushing, bearing bushing. And we'll go ahead and make a new one, put it in there. You can see all the brass that has flaked off on the inside of that in this pulley. I need to get that cleaned up. So I think we're ready to move on here. I got my pulley cleaned up a little bit, a little bit better than it was anyway. Uh, you actually see the paint in there now, but uh, we're ready to start working on the actual bearing here. So I got a new piece of bronze that we're gonna be turning this bearing out of. And this particular product is called Oilite. Uh, that's this trade name. I don't, I don't know that this is actually the Oilite trade brand or whatever, but it's the same type of thing. It's basically a porous bronze that has oil impregnated into it. And it will absorb oil. It will actually soak the oil up into the bearing so that um, if you got a bearing that's in a place that's hard to oil or doesn't get oiled or doesn't get you know frequently serviced, it will kind of keep that oil in there and as it warms up, it'll release some of that oil back out down in there. So we're gonna put that in here this time. Hopefully it'll hold up a little bit better than this uh, just old solid bronze uh, bushing that was in there before. Uh, maybe we get more than 20 years out of it this time. I'm gonna start, anyway, but I, we got this from McMaster Car and it's just a standard size. It's a little bit oversized on the outside, a little bit undersized on the inside. First thing I'm gonna do is cut it off to the proper length and then we're gonna go over to the lathe and uh, I'm gonna bore the inside first, then we're gonna put this on a mandrel and turn the outside concentric to the inside, 
press it in there. I need to get a measurement over here to figure out exactly where we need to um, turn it to. And uh, a little bit of lathe work, and I think we'll have this job knocked out. I'm gonna go cut that off over on the marble saw, and uh, we'll go from there. And nothing fancy here, guys. I'm just going to put a mark on there and go cut it off. So I got my bearing cut off the length. We've got it over in the lathe and we're going to start boring it out. Now we're going to inch and seven sixteenths, uh, which is one inch point four three seven five. And we do need to have a little bit oversized for clearance in here because it's going to be free spinning on a shaft of that diameter. According to Machinery's Handbook, about two thousandths oversized is what we need for a plain bearing, plain bronze bearing in that diameter. So we've got a boring bar set up. We're starting out around, this is a roughly an inch and an eighth. Uh, it's a rough diameter. It's not even a true diameter right now. We're gonna be cleaning all that up, but we're gonna be taking it up to one inch point four three seven five or four three seven seven, I guess. So there we go, let's go. We'll touch off. We'll make a light pass this first cut through. Do a little bit more than that. let it cut through. Alright, we are all the way through. Go ahead and take another 20 thou. I am taking a little bit lighter cuts on this right now until I get it through to, uh, bored out through. Uh, it is a fairly long bore for that diameter, so I don't want to get too much flex in that boring bar. All right, I'm just going to get a really rough measurement on the diameter just using a pair of calipers we're actually using a bore mic once we get up a little bit higher and we are at one inch 127. putting that in the digital readout so we can kind of keep track of where we're at and uh, we'll continue on here Take about a 40,000th cut this time. All right, I've been going pretty uh, coarse feed rate. You see the centrifugal force is throwing some of that oil out of there too. I've been going pretty coarse feed rate. I'm gonna slow this uh, feed rate down a little bit to get a little bit better surface finish on the final cuts here. Again, we're going to 0.4375, I'm about a little over four right now. I'm gonna feed in about 20 thousandths. We're gonna run a slower feed right here. And we're gonna get a good, good reading with the four micrometer. And I'm gonna take this bore mic and put it in here. Figure out that's 1.4. 1.410. I'm going to 4375. Taking a 20,000th cut. 1.4. 25, 35, 0.435. So we just need a couple more thousandths. I'm just gonna do another uh, spring pass here. I'm not even gonna move the cutter.
24, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37. All right, 4375 is the size of the shaft, so that's about where we're at right now. And I want to be just a little bit over that, about two thousandths over that. And we're just, I mean, we're practically there. So I think I'll just run the uh, one more spring pass through there. It just needs about a half a thou or a thou more clearance. It, I mean, it'd be fine right now, but I'm just going to be on the safe side here. We're just barely fuzzing. This will be our final pass. We'll, we'll be the size here. All right, I'm going to uh, move my cutter in so I don't drag it back across. We'll measure that in a minute, but I know we're where we need to be. We're within that air range of uh, clearance. Right, I want to go ahead and just uh, face this in. to get a nice square surface on it. And, and I've noticed that this is a little bit bell-mouthed on this end for some reason, so I'm gonna just turn this down a little bit because I wanna flip it over and uh, turn the other side. And right now, when I tried to chuck it up this way, see how it's not touching down here at all? It's just kind of bell-mouthed on the end. I just wanna try to knock that down a little bit where I can chuck it up in the other direction and face the other end. We're going to be turning all this um, outside diameter off coming up while it's on a uh, mandrel so it'll be concentric with the inside and we can turn the whole way. But I'm just trying to get that bell mouth out where I can chuck it up the other direction right now. And I'm just going to take this a little bit more off. And we're going to call that good. flip it around. And I just want to, this has got a saw cut on it, I just want to true it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be concentric to the, uh, or square to the bore, but it, just trying to clean it up a little bit. That'll work. All right, we're going to get this out and uh, put it on a mandrel and we'll turn the outside diameter. So this is a set of expanding mandrels for turning something concentric to the an inside and outside diameter. So basically you got two tapers here and uh, these run up on one another. And as you slide this down, this gets bigger and bigger until it matches the diameter of what you're uh, gonna put into it. So we're just gonna kind of Push this down until it starts to make contact right in there. And uh, I usually just bump it on down a little bit more. And now that is in there nice and tight. And we can set this up on the lathe running between centers. And uh, the outside will be running perfectly concentric with the inside and we can turn that to OD. So let's go over to the lathe, get that set up and we'll turn out outside diameter. Got our part over here set up on the mandrel. It's running between centers, so I've got a, a dead center mounted up here in the chuck. The chuck's turning. We've got a live center down here, and basically this is sitting between those two points. So it's very true set up. Uh, we're using a dog here to actually drive this. So this dog will be hitting the chuck, and that's what's gonna be spinning it around. So we're a little over two inches to start out with. I've measured my bore over there 
and basically for a nice press fit, I need to come up, I need to be 1.878 is what I need to be on the diameter. So we got a little bit of take off of that. Let's get in here and get a nice uh, precision fit. We'll go press that bushing in and I think we'll be about done. Over here and just touch off on this. And we'll take around 40 thousandths off. Get our micrometer out here. Get a measurement on this. We'll set our digital readout. So yeah, we're actually a little over two inches still. About 19 thousandths over there. Yeah, all right. Take another pass. measurement here now. I think we'll be in the range of the micrometer to get a accurate reading this time. We were a little over two inches last time. So yeah, we're, yeah, two, three thousandths over two inches. About the same. Just in the digital readout, 2.003, 2.003. All right, we're gonna take her down to 1.878. That's some trifical force that's throwing all that oil out, as well as cutting it away, just wiping it off. Two, nine oh two. That's what we're reading on the digital readout. We're going to what is it? Eight, seven, eight. So I'm just going to take about twenty thousandths. That should leave me just a little bit over, and we'll kind of sneak up on that last measurement. Seventy-five, eighty-one, eight, eighty-one, eight, eighty-one. All right. Just going to dial in eight seven eight. Right there. This should be a final pass. Very light cut. All right. That should be it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, champ for the ends of that. Just champ for these edges. That'll help. Uh, go in while we're uh, pressing as well as just get a sharp corner off of that and we should be ready to roll. 
So we're ready to press this uh, little bushing in. And uh, what I've done is I've gone and put this in the freezer for a couple hours and that will shrink it down just a little bit and help it go in. It's, a, it's a t a oversized, but just barely. So that little bit of um, cooling down often will make all the difference in the world and making it easy to press in. I am also gonna put a little bit of Loctite on this. This is just some green Loctite that's made for uh, tight, close tolerance, um, press fits on oily material. So uh, I think we got the right product here. Let me go ahead, we're just gonna put this in there and yeah, because of that freezing that we did, it's just gonna kind of start in there on its own. And we'll just press that right in. It's getting a little bit tighter as it goes in. There we go. That should do it. And that should finish that up. All right, we got our bushing pushed in there. All that looks great. Last step I gotta do is uh, there are two oil holes. It's actually kind of through these where the set screws would have originally had gone in this. I need to just drill a couple of clearance holes all the way through there. So I need to get a drill bit that's long enough to go through here. Nothing precision, just a, a clearance hole where we can oil these and get some oil down inside that groove. So let me uh, go do that real quick. And I think we'll have this knocked out. I've got these oil holes drilled down through here and I want to deburr the inside of this. So I've got this little Noga tool that's designed just for this. It basically will reach in and kind of let you just work around that inside hole there and uh, get that cleaned up. So we'll just kind of come in here and work that cutter around that inside hole. It cuts on both sides. And I just want to deburr that and get that little sharp edge off of that. All right, I think we got it. I'll get the other side done. And this project is finished. And with that, I think we got this project done. I'm gonna get this back out to the museum so they can put it back on the line shaft in there and have this working. This was a little bit of a rush job for me. They've got a big event coming up at the museum uh, this coming weekend of when I'm shooting this. Probably by the time you guys see it, the event, the Folk Life Festival have already have happened. Uh, but they were wanting to get this done before then so that they could have the woodworking shop up and running during the Folk Life Festival. So we got this knocked out. Fortunately, not a big, terrible job to do. Just took a couple of hours here in the shop and uh, it's ready to go. So we'll get this back over to them and they'll be back in business and we can move on to working on the capstan project, which is uh, really my top priority right now to get knocked out of the shop. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. It really helps out uh, when you watch them. And big thank you to those who subscribe. And as always, a big thank you to the guys who support Stipe financially through PayPal and Patreon. There's links for that down in the description below if you can help out. Uh, really enables me to be able to take the time to shoot the videos, edit the videos, and do everything else that's involved with the edit, the video part of this, which more or less doubles how long it takes for me to do any project in the shop, not even counting the editing time. So with that, we're going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.